Hello, welcome back. I hope you're doing very well. Like pretty much everyone else in the Force community, um, especially those who have a gig 10 minutes before it came out, I've uh, uh, installed the version 3.2 uh, firmware on Force. Um, I think it's 3.2, whichever the new one is. Um, and I've been playing with probability because to me that was the most interesting thing they've uh, introduced in this version. And I found like quite an interesting or quite a practical way of using it, which I hadn't thought of before really. Um, so I thought I'd make a very quick video about that. So when I've used probability in the past, it's mostly been on electron boxes like the Digitone and the Digitact. And I've always used it quite sparingly to add just little bits of variation, like an extra drum hit here or an extra drum hit there or a few extra notes just so that a uh, arrangement has some variation or some development kind of happening automatically. But because with the force, we've got so many more tracks, um, essentially we can have a whole song on this one box. If we apply the um, probability to everything or, or certainly more judiciously, we can actually sort of profoundly change the way a pattern sounds from one part to the next without actually changing the pattern. That makes any sense so what i've done here um, in our first scene i've got a, a four bar sequence if you like uh, some drums two or three arps some vocal chops it's way too dense way too complicated that's kind of on purpose because i want to, this to be very obvious what's happening um, so i'll play it uh, so you can see what it sounds like so make a note there's a there's like a little popcorn arp happening constantly the vocal chops are all the time, we've got hi-hats and stuff happening all the time. So it's a really busy, quite dense sort of pattern. And basically this uh, has no probability attached to it or applied to it at all. So if we go to the clip view, you can see this is our, uh, where are we, select yeah, our drums. This is, I don't know why that didn't show the first time, that's weird. Anyway, uh, this is our a pluck, an arp, this is the constant arp. Bass, vocal chops, yada yada, you get the idea. No probability applied whatsoever. So what I then did was copy and paste that. Made no changes, just copied and pasted it. Um, and went and applied probability to each of these elements in, to varying degrees. So if we go to the list mode now, the, it's most evident on the popcorn arp. So let's uh, select that. So this is what, this is that... Um, why is that? Something really weird's going on here. It's not displaying things the first time you tap them. I don't know. I'm going to leave that in so they cut me out just so you can see that there's an odd bit of behaviour going on there. Um, so this is that constant arp that was playing and you can see that I've set each of the steps to that down to 20%, which is quite a low probability. But because there are lots of these notes, we will still get quite a... Um, it will appear quite regularly, let's put it that way. Just a little thing that you may not have noticed, when you're selecting these to edit them, if you hold the shift button down, it actually lets, lets you multiple select multiple steps, which is pretty handy. So on that really kind of frequent um, arc that's happening all the time, I set the probability down to each of the events to 20%, which is quite low. But then if we go to our base loop, um, see it did work first time this time, I don't know why. Um, I set that to 60%. Um, and the reason I've done that is because we're, what we're trying to do is create a variation or, or a part B, um, which is going to be sparser, but we still want the, un in this instance, we still want the underlying groove of the piece to sit there. So we don't want to take too much of our bass out there. And if we look at our drums, you can see uh, this won't be evident. You have to take my word for it. But things like the kick drum and the snare, I've left at 100% probability. But other things like the hi-hats and there are some other like clicks and um, percussion elements, I've brought them down to 80% because I want the kick, and the, dr uh, the kick and the snare and the bass to still be quite present so that the underpinning groove of this piece stays. But then the hi-hats and the percussion come in and out a little bit. There's a little bit of randomness to them. And I've done uh, similar sort of things with the other elements. This pluck here wasn't as frequent as the popcorn arp. So I've brought it down to 77%, so which has stripped it back a little bit. We've looked at the bass. 
Um, the uh, vocal chops I've brought right down to 30% because to my mind, listening to that first sequence, that vocal chop was the sort of most prominent thing. So we've brought those chops down to 30% probability, meaning they'll happen three times out of 10. Um, and the vo and the uh, the vocal swell, which was just like a pad coming in behind everything, down to 25%, so they'll happen um, a, a quarter of the time. So in a nutshell, what I've done is taken a really dense loop, copied and pasted it, and then set the probability so that the underpinning groove of this thing stays, but all of the stuff on top becomes much sparser and evolves slightly. So enough of me talking about it, I'll show you what it sounds like. So this is our first loop going around. I'll play it twice so you can get the feel of it. So our new one will come in now. And it sounds profoundly different to me. We've still got the um, underpinning groove, like I said, but it's much sparser. So it's an automatic um, kind of B part or, or bridge. I copied it again and just put a, a pad on top to show how you could then add another element to it to really properly turn it into a B part. So now we this feels like a different part, a different section of the song, and yet it's exactly the same as our top bit, we just changed the probability. Eventually, come on. And then we can seamlessly move between probability and no probability, which gives us a part A and a part B, and we've changed no notes. I think that's quite a nice um, method for building up a, a part or an arrangement that has some nice variation in it without actually having to write any new bits. The other thing is this way of using this kind of stripped back but slightly evolving, slightly changing um, method of creating a B section. If you're someone that wants to have a part where you solo over it or improvise over it, you can actually use that method of um, probability to have that thing looping in the background in the knowledge that it's always going to be slightly different. It's not going to get boring because every time it plays around, those probabilities will fall differently and the, the piece or the part will sound slightly differently. So if you're playing guitar over it or something, it's just quite a nice evolving backing track as well. So that's, that's what I've taken from the probability. Yes, you can obviously use it in the traditional sense of adding some extra drum hits in here or there or some or you could go full ambient and have a fully kind of evolving thing. But the middle ground of using it to create a nice stripped back or, uh, or you could go the other way and make it a busier kind of with the higher probability than your um, A part. But it's just a nice way of creating a variation. So uh, that I'm really pleased with this. this. This makes a lot of sense to me and it's added a lot of value to the force, I think. One other thing I wanted to show you just while I've been playing around, if we go to our mixer, uh, and our uh, main track, the air flavor. Um, I, I was quite disappointed because when I saw the videos, I thought we were going to get the flavor pro, but we've only got the strip back, the budget version of it. But I have noticed that if you go to the reel to reel um, preset, and if you set the timbre quite low, but turn the distortion up a bit, we get quite a nice tape saturation effect. So this is with it on. This is it with it out, so it brightens up a little bit. But then we do get quite a nice little bit of tape saturation on that, which I think sounds pretty good actually. And that was something I thought the force was missing, a, a nice tape saturation to stick on your master channel. Anyway, I hope that was useful. I probably spoke too long this time. Um, but I hope you're enjoying the uh, the new update. Uh, if you've bought the plugins, I hope you're enjoying those too. I hope this is useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.